My guest today is Leah Evans, a pro skier and founder of Girls Do Ski, a camp to help women and girls reach their full potential. She's been in many ski movies, including Pretty Faces, the first all-female ski film. She's on the Patagonia athlete team, and she now lives in Revelstoke, BC. So thank you so much, Leah, for joining us. No problem. Hello. Yeah. So, you know, I if you Google yourself, which you probably don't do very often, <laughs> there are hundreds of articles that come up about you. You have been massively influential in the ski universe and especially um, in the female ski universe, obviously. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, what things were like when you grew up and maybe some of uh, your mentors or your role models. You grew up in, in Rosalind, which is the home of Red Mountain. Um, tell me a little bit about kind of who inspired you and how you knew you loved skiing and wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I grew up in Rosslyn, um, and it was right next door to having the the Canadian Free Skiing Challenge. So all the big names, like, I feel like when free skiing was really budding, Rosslyn was like one of the places that you always went, etc. So it was very much in my literal backyard. So I got exposed to that, and I definitely did my first competition without being... 19 I was 18 but I knew the organizers so they snuck me in <laughs> and it was just amazing to have all those people around and that event especially and one person in specific um well there's there's quite a few people but um one role model I had when I was really young uh was this local girl named Meg Oster and she was on the North Face team um kind of when Ingrid first started too and she was always doing 360s and 180s off all the rollers. And I was like, wow, she was so cool. Um, and I just had her as like a kind of a landmark of like something that I could become. Yeah. So that was kind of where I, and a lot of local coaches too, who really helped inspired and facilitate my skill um, development, et cetera, too. That's awesome. And um you went on to found Girls Do Ski when you were only 19. So tell me about, you know, why you founded that and, um, you know, at such a young age, how you saw a need for something like those camps. Yeah, definitely. So it was kind of, to kind of touch on the Meg Oster thing again too, is she was a little bit out of my reach. And I was like, oh, I want to create a space where everyone can get together and there's no boundaries. It's like, hey, I've always wanted to meet you. And it's kind of a safe space to be like, I think you're really cool. Like, can you teach me something? And that's kind of where Girls Do Ski got born out of is just connecting community and especially female communities of different ages. And everybody's been through a different experience. So bringing people together to share is just, I think it's really important in general, but then specifically when there's such a small number of female skiers back then, um, it was really important for me to find other people like me too, that you weren't like crazy for fulfilling the dream or pursuing a path. So that's kind of where Girls Do Ski first started. And did you have any idea back then that it would touch such a nerve? I mean, it sells out, I think every season and, and it's grown to be so big and you've got some really big name coaches now. Um, did you have any idea back then that it would hit such a nerve? Well, to be honest, after doing the first one and I just did it totally free and 40 people came and it was kind of right after that, I was like, okay, this is something. And I was like, wrote a business plan and like put full efforts into making it happen. So I think there is always that feedback of energy. And I yeah. think now it's just a continuum of the, that energy. And there's a lot of female skiers, which is so amazing. Um, yeah. And there's more platforms started, which I think is also amazing. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't want to say no, but I like maybe the scale that it has become and maybe the people that have it's touched I don't even really know um but it was always there from day one of like okay this is something that needs to happen yeah and you know from where I sit I, I really do think that you kind of kicked off this sort of snowballing movement and you know 
it was probably the time was right for for women skiers to finally get their space in the industry but um it's really snowballed and and uh become quite a thing like you know women's camps are now pretty ubiquitous across all the sports too there's like surfing camps mm -hmm. mountain biking camps and what do you think it is about having only women in a group that that makes such a difference for for women and kind of helping them get more confident and teaching them yeah i think you definitely nailed it on the head of what you just said too is that that space of confidence um so i'm just going to do this as a personal example so if i am skiing something and i know another female skier has done it i automatically have this confidence that i'm like okay like Elise Sog said, she already dropped this cliff. Like I know it's possible. Um, and then I think once you bring that into a space where you're learning and you have those people as coaches or et cetera, and you know that they've already um, kind of achieved something or done something, it, it's like this automatic being like, okay, like I know you've reached this potential, like teach me how to reach my potential. And I think it's just a safe space to ask questions on how to do that or little techniques, et cetera. I think sometimes we get in these scenarios where our ego will block us from actually learning and, pre and prevent us from growing. So I think getting into a space where you feel comfortable and any question is a good question is a really positive space to learn. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's what we try and create at Girls Do Ski and I've personally tried it orchestrate throughout the whole I don't know 13 years that we've been doing it is just a positive space um and just getting rid of all these mental blocks etc and um yeah just finding other people that encourage you to do something too that's awesome I, I think the ego piece is a really interesting phenomenon I've been in um a lot of different scenarios where you know, there's maybe one woman and it's all dudes and, and there is such a, a feeling there where you don't want to do anything stupid or ask anything that might be construed as, you know, ignorant, or there is definitely like, um, a different feeling in those mixed groups. And when it's all women, uh, I find women are genuinely just sort of more connected and open and maybe more encouraging of each other that it is a really different feeling. Um, and I think the ego, I mean, do you see, do you see that as being kind of one of the dangers of the backcountry really? Is your ego getting in the way? Um, tell me a little bit more about the role you think ego plays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, um... Ego in the backcountry can be um, harmful at points. Um, it's like a multi-layered question because if you don't know enough, you're going to put up a shield to either pretend that you know enough or you're going to be fully open and be like, I don't know anything. Yeah. Um, but I think it's once you create this like shield of like, I know everything or I know something, you get it a little bit more confident. And I think it just has to be rooted in like actual skill sets and time in the mountains too. And I think it just takes so much time and learning these lessons, et cetera. Uh, and yeah, I think the mountains are always gonna be bigger than you. So if you have an ego bigger than the mountains, it's already setting you up for an unequal conversation in the mountains. Tell me a little bit about how um, you have seen women benefit from the skills that you teach them in the backcountry and, you know, on the resort as well. Um, you know, does that help them grow in other areas of their life? How, how have you seen their skills kind of transfer over? What have you heard from them and how does it help them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely um, maybe don't have like as many direct because um, I feel like people like they have this experience and then they go away and they will get into a scenario and they're like, all right, like she said to do this. And then but I'm not always there for those moments or sometimes I will get stories, but they're not always shared. So I think that 
yeah, the stories that I have heard, um, for example, this is more of like a community connector story is this woman from Quebec had a girls do ski sticker on her car and another woman saw it and she was like, oh, I've always wanted to go to that camp. And they didn't know each other. And then they became friends and they started skiing together every weekend. And then they actually came out um, west and went to a camp together, but they're like full on ski buddies. And that was literally from one sticker. And I think that's just like a, a statement of being like, I believe in all female skiers and like in this community. So um, yeah, I don't know the, I just like, I don't know all the ripple effects, but I just hope that we've helped someone at some point when they're either on or off skis or like, right, my chin is down. I'm like, I need to put my chin up to be confident in this situation. And like that might be at work or it might be like on your skis, dropping into something. So I think we teach fundamentals, but they go far beyond skiing too. This is a little bit more of a personal question. You are um, a total skiing phenom and you know, you by all rights could have just focused on your own ski career and just been a, a star and you chose to do that also obviously, but to lift everybody up in your wake. What, what, what is that about you that, um, um made you want to do that and help other people and really kind of devote your career to lifting other women up instead of just sort of succeeding yourself mm -hmm. yeah it's always interesting because I think I've had this um reflection a lot too I'm like you can do the the casual comparison and be like oh like they got to do this or they got to do that about other female athletes and sometimes I'll be like oh why did I make certain decisions and I think then I'll go out with someone or um, it'll be someone from the camp and they land their first drop or they finally like something clicks in their skiing and I'm like that's it you you can feel that feeling and I think it's just that power of you can have this like individual experience and you know your potential by doing all these things but then if you are invited into someone else's potential and you actually get to share that moment with them where it clicks, I think that is like by far a really great invitation and really makes your life a lot more full. Um, and I think that's just where this ideology of individual or community is always, I've just, yeah, I don't know. It's always been that way of like, I don't want to just be out here alone basically your camp also when you brought your camp to revelstoke um ever since you moved there it seems to me that revelstoke has become this unbelievable hotbed for female skiers and you actually tipped me off to the blondes who i'm obsessed with of course mm -hmm. tell me a little bit um about how you've seen Revelstoke evolve uh, from when you moved there and kind of what's happening and what it's like uh, for women there right now. Yeah, it's so amazing. Like I always have to like zoom out and be like, okay, not everywhere is like this. Um, so I think even if you casually go up to the ski hill, you'd be like, oh, that girl is a really good skier. That girl's a really good skier. And there's just people who are working um, at the ski resort or etc and I think it really has become this like hotbed of like if you're a core female skier this is kind of where you come um, and I think that's like a pilgrimage also of like that you don't want to be alone yes. you, know, you don't you want to find like your goal in life is to like find friends and find people that you can relate to so I think as a female skier if here like you're like oh I could become a guide a pro skier or I could just like do whatever and I still have other females that I can relate with or do like um just go skiing with totally um so I think Rebel Soak has really been a cool like ladder system and we're now seeing the blondes coming up and I was just talking with Janelle uh the other day actually and I was like I'm so proud of you guys and they're like she was like, I really wanted to come to go to a girls do ski camp. And like, uh, so I just, I, I don't know like her full perspective, but I could just like from that brief moment where I was like, oh, wow. Like she knew that this was happening here. So this was the place to come. 
yeah. I think it's, uh, yeah, I'm just like so stoked on those girls and the fact that we can help foster these relationships is really, really cool. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's a great example of social media really helping uh, break things open for women too, mm -hmm. because there's no longer the gatekeeper of the magazine editor or the film editor. You know, there's, there used to be like one token woman and now, you know, they've really used social media to kind of open up their world. It's pretty cool. We're seeing more female produced content and that's like, we always joke like with the film dream job, it hit on so many topics, like it was female content in like an ironic way. And it was funny. It was like all these things that the ski scene had never seen before. Yeah. And yeah, that was just like a, another example of like those girls being in town. And I think we've just like continued to like elevate each other and like the industry here. Yeah. That still is probably my favorite ski film of all times. I oh, love yeah. that. I have watched it so many times and sent it to so many people. It is the best. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just refreshing. It's like one that you remember too. Like I'll often like quote lines from it. And I was like, oh my God, I've watched it so <laughs> yeah it's it's really really good mm -hmm. um and I think the humor too was really big because you know women have certainly gotten more of the limelight as we've you know evolved but we're not typically you know capturing our humor you know it's interesting so I thought that was really awesome um what barriers to entry do you still see for women um, in the backcountry, getting into the backcountry? I know mentorship is really hard to find. Um, what barriers to entry do you see happening still for women specifically, and what can we do about it? Yeah, well, I think definitely the barrier to entry is also financial, um, like socioeconomical wise, like uh, you can sure you can buy a pass and go skiing at the resort, but then to go into the backcountry, you need the pack, the beacon, the shovel, the probe, the skins, the bindings, like it just goes on and on. Yeah. So I think there is a huge boundary there to start off with. And then it's this next step of education. And I think that could be education and mentorship tied in. Um, and yeah, if you don't have a correct skill set, like if you're not a strong skier and you're automat automatically trying to go into the backcountry, you have like another like mark, you know, like it's, um, I think there's a, a lot of things to actually be safe in the backcountry. Um, yeah, and I think that's just like, I've recognized that within Girls Do Ski, like, uh, Last year, we just started a scholarship fund for people. Uh, I was just noticing like with inflation, like our prices had to go up and we had to be a standard rate. Uh, but my goal has always been to get people out there and get that mentorship and connection. And the scholarship got created through uh, like this pioneer in the industry. She was like, I wanna help out. so we combined forces and we created the scholarship and there's three spots on three different camps for people, um, ladies to get into the backcountry. And we provided free rentals, free lift tickets, etc. So I think it's just keeping that in mind as we're progressing the sport, that there's gonna be people who are trying to enter really fast or they maybe are really slow at entering and just the speed that they're able, able to get out there. I think is, uh, or maybe not even at all. I think we just have to be very conscious about. Did you ever feel, I guess, like the women who come to your girls do ski camp have felt? Definitely in other sports, I felt that way. Cause I'm like, oh, this is, I'm like, I need a coach. <laughs> <laughs> like I was biking the summer with a friend who's actually a girls do ski coach. And she's like, okay, just follow me down this. And I was like, I'm scared. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, this is the exact same feeling of people when they come to the camp. And like, so having that feeling and like doing new things is really like connected me to that source because I've been skiing for so long now that I just go on autopilot for a lot of things. And I think the barrier to entry 
is I, I don't know. I like maybe my glass is always full versus half full. And I, I've just seen it as there's so many great opportunities within the sport. And if you're willing to work hard and actually like do something that there is a plethora of opportunity. Yeah. Um, and of course you're going to have people who want to bring you down, but you just have to really uh, look at that energy and think, okay, are they just, are they jealous or where is that coming from? Cause the higher you rise people, there's going to be someone who wants to bring you down for sure. Um, and that, I think that's just a matter of um, raising your frequency in life. And yeah, I just think I've had such great mentorship and support and friendship and um, especially with my male colleagues, like I've been in these scenarios where I've always been like, okay, I can ski, I can do this. Um, and I have that confidence in my skill set. So whenever I get put into scenarios, I know that they can trust me and I trust myself to be there. Um, and I just think one of the pivotal shifts with the male colleagues has also been after Sarah Burke passed away, mm -hmm. there was just like this crazy underlying support for all female skiers. Yeah. And from males being like, we recognize you, we want to help you. Yeah. Um, her legacy is so strong. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, it's, you can always, you can be a victim or you can just go out there and make change. And I just think how you spend your energy is the most important thing. What is next for you? Well, currently at this moment, I'm just, we launched uh, the new um, online coaching platform, the Stance Coaching. Oh, cool. So um, I wanted to name it after the Power Stance, which we uh, teach at Girls Do Ski. And it's just like, okay, this is my most powerful position when I'm skiing. And yeah, the new online platform, uh, you can just book a session and then we do like a one-on-one -on -one feedback with you and take you through okay, this is maybe a skill that you could work on. This is looking good. And we give you uh, like a skills guide and a roadmap for your season. Oh, and wow. Back in with you. So it's like a ski coaching, but we do like a little bit of life stuff in there too. Um, and I think that's definitely where I want, like I've done a lot of coaching certificates now and I will continue to do them. So I think that's definitely one of my main interests at the moment. Wow, that's really cool. So how does that work online? Do people take video of themselves or, you know, send you video of them skiing and you coach them on their video? Is that how yeah, it works? Definitely. So we need at least two videos and uh, it's the best if there's one on piste and one off piste. Yeah. And, and I'll just go through or we'll select a coach that matches you the best. Um, right now I'm, I've got, yeah, a few people that I'm working with specifically and I'll look at their, their footage and be like, okay, I'll break it down from the whole structure of the body and we'll go through it one, one-on-one. On one, and then we have a series of our own videos that we've produced. Um, and yeah, then they can be like, okay, like next time I go to the resort, I'm going to work on my chin position. And they have like all these exercises that they can do, um, and then later down the road, we'll check back in with you and be like, how's it going? Like, do you have any questions? Um, and it's been really cool because we, with COVID, we're not able to see as many people at the moment. So uh, we can still foster that community and just that connection with people too. And also taking away one of the big barriers to entry to coming to one of your camps, which is yeah. cost and all that. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah, definitely. So. Um, that was new for us. I've wanted to do it for years, like, and then COVID, like everybody's saying this, it just gave, gave me the extra um, time and space to facilitate it. So that is really, really cool. I've never thought about my chin position while skiing. That's fascinating. Yeah, <laughs> it matters. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. And, and it's pretty cool because we've had like 13 years of fundamentals that we've been coaching and um, yeah, just to go through them and be like, okay, like I've spent so much time like thinking about things now that I'm like, we have um, just a really cool curriculum. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for taking so much time. This is, this oh yeah, all good.